So a couple of years ago, I made a, a lighting tutorial video, um, which went on my channel, and uh, it was like a, one of these ones I did where it was like Unity tutorial in five minutes. Um, but you know, a lot has changed since that video. Um, Unity was a much simpler time, uh, and now lighting has got it's, it's not really changed too much. But with the advantages of having the high definition and universal render pipeline. I thought it would be a good opportunity to look at lighting again, start from the very basics and work our way up. So in this new tutorial series, we're going to take a look at lighting, what lights are available, what the different lighting modes are, what the differences are in lighting between the 3D HDRP and the URP, and then we can have a look at what light baking is um, and all the different kind of techniques around lighting your game. But in this particular video, we're going to start right at right from the very beginning and we're going to have a look at what light types are available in Unity. Let's have a look. So here we are in Unity and for this particular tutorial, I'm actually using the um, Universal Render Pipeline and that's not really important. For this one, we're just going to go over the lights, um, the different types of lights that there are in Unity uh, and how you can use them to light your scene. But for this setup, I've completely removed all the lights from the scene. There's no nothing lighting this scene at all. Even in the lighting settings in my environment, there's there's no um, skybox or sun source. All the lights have been removed from the scene, which has given us this really black kind of looking environment. There's no lights, so everything's going to be dark. If I click on the little um, light toggle button here, you can see this is what my environment looks like. This is all unlit. Uh, and then when I go and press the light button there, you can see there's, there's no lights acting on anything in the scene. So the first light I want to take a look at is the directional light. So to add one of those in, I'm going to right click in the hierarchy, go down to light, and you can see here we've got a list of lights that we can use. Directional light, point light, spotlight, and area light. To start with, we're going to take a look at directional light. And directional lights are really good at simulating the effect of the sun in your scene. And it doesn't matter where you position this directional light, no matter where you drag it, it's not going to influence anything. Um, it's purely It purely works on its angle, so we can manipulate it here using the rotation tool, and you can see as we move it, it's going to affect the shadows. Now this light is going to affect any game object, no matter how far away it is. You can kind of think of this light as having an infinite extent. So if there was a game object or a sphere that was like a mile down in our scene, um, it would still be having the same result as these spheres just here. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And then the next light we're going to have a look is the... See what's next on the list? Is the point light. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this to zero. And you can see here the effect that the point light is having on our, on our scene. The point light, light is emitted from the center outwards in this... Um, gizmo that you can see here. So everything within this sphere is going to be affected by the light. So a point light sends light out equally in all directions. The difference is with this light from the directional light is that the further you get away from the light source, if I take this sphere here, then you can see um, it's not going to be affected by the light. It has a range. And the way that this light acts is known by something called the inverse square law which is similar to how light behaves in the real world. The spotlights are really great for using as like um, street lamps in your scene or other elements of light where it needs to affect just a certain area. They also make really good um, light sources for spark effects and fires and things like that. So next up we have our spotlight. I'm going to go ahead and add one of those to our scene. It's third in the list. And I'm going to put it back at zero. And instantly here you can see how this is this one's going to work. I'm going to rotate it around and move it back into position. So just like a point light, a spotlight has a defined area and range. But unlike a point light, the spotlight is only going to emit light in one direction. And that's shown you um, here by the kind of like the yellow gizmo around the light and we can control things such as the angle of the light and also the fall off that the intensity of the light around the edges as you can see as I pull this inner circle out the light source doesn't have so much of a fall off but then as I bring it back into the center you can see that it's quite soft 
So spotlights are really great for artificial light sources. You could use one of these as like a torch, for example, or um, they also would make great streetlights um, if they were pointing down in the scene. And also car headlights as well, if you can, you can kind of imagine them being used um, attached to a vehicle as it's moving through a dark scene. And then lastly, the last light I want, you to, I want to take a look at, I'm going to have to load up a new scene for this one. Um, and this is going to be called uh, an area light. So by, by getting an area light in the scene, you right click hierarchy and then add in an area light. And you can see I've added in three area lights to this scene. But the difference with this is that area lights require baking, certainly in the 3D version of Unity, like the vanilla version, uh, and in the universal render pipeline, the area lights will need to be baked. So once you put it in, you'll see here under the light type, you've got area baked only. I've gone ahead and set up my scene for light baking here, just so you can see how the area lights work. But they area lights emit light uh, from one direction only, and it emits it uniformly all across the area of the gizmo here. But they'll only emit from one side of the rectangle. And that emitting side is indicated by the white line coming out from the forward direction of the rectangle. I'm gonna jump back into my lighting scene. And then last but not least, there is just one other kind of type of light, I suppose you could call it, that we need to kind of touch upon. If I go ahead and turn my lights off, or you know, go back to the unlit version of the scene, you can actually use emissive materials. So on our sphere here, uh, I've created a material called emissive. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that on there. And you can see when I go back to um, turn my lighting back on, um, emissive objects are going to cast a light in the scene and when baked this will have an influence on the game objects around it and that's best demonstrated in my um, area light scene here if I go ahead and duplicate this sphere control D and then drop on my emissive material it's going to do it it's going to generate the light and you can see here it affects the light around using the emissive material so I, I deliberately haven't gone over what the light settings are in this video. I think in my next one we can go through and take a look at just what all these um, options mean on the light sources and um, from the mode all the way down through to real-time shadows and indirect multiplier and just what they actually mean. But for this tutorial I just want you to think about what different light types are available for use in your game uh, and how you could best use them depending on your current situation. So that concludes this video on the introduction to lighting and for this one I just really wanted to cover off the four main light types that we can use in Unity uh, and these will be consistent um, throughout the 3D version, the universal render pipeline and the high definition render pipeline. There'll be subtle differences in how they work from one to the other but at least you know what the light types are and hopefully have an, a good understanding of where you can leverage each type of light for best results in your game. In the next one we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at some of the light settings and how we can tweak those to get the effect we want. See you then.